Today I'm going to play Blood and Guts on the Commodore 64. The game was developed by Greve Graphics in 1986 and published by Action Software. The game consists of 10 ancient barbarian games made for two players who put themselves against each other in order to see who is the tougher man. The game begins with you choosing your character from the four players shown, Gnaw, Hawk, Nop and Dog. There are no benefits to choosing any fighter, this is purely an aesthetic choice. Once a player is selected, you can choose to practice an event or compete. Look at the Grieve graphics text on the screen here. They must have been proud of their screen and decided to put their name on it so they can show you how selection screens are done. First off we have the tug of war event. In this event you need to try and pull your opponent into the water in the middle of the screen by building up energy and then letting that energy out to pull on the rope. The more energy you charge, the harder you can pull, but the longer you charge, the more your opponent pulls you towards the water. The event was quite easy, it just requires a little patience to release your energy in short bursts at the right time. The next event is the tower jump. In this event the object is to jump farther than your opponent. You do this by pulling the joystick down to squat, then releasing the joystick to launch your player off the tower. Your character will then spin head over feet through the air and actually needs to land head first in the ground or the jump doesn't count. So you need to hit the joystick button at just the right time to stop your character spinning when his head is facing down. I'm not sure I would call this a win if you need to break your neck to win an event. The event is great fun and you need lightning reflexes to get your opponent's head facing towards the ground at the right time. The rock roller event pits you in a battle against your opponent to race a heavy rock to the top of a hill. If you win, your opponent is squashed by your rock, and if he wins, his rock squishes you. To get your rock to the top of the hill, you must waggle your joystick up and down as fast as you can to build up the power bar at the bottom of the screen. Once your bar is in the blue, you hit your joystick button to take a step. Your bar then resets, and you start the process again until you've made it all the way to the top of the hill. Although you have to wiggle the joystick quite fast, it wasn't too hard. The next event is a beer drinking event in which you have to slam down large glasses of beer faster than your opponent. This is done by waggling your joystick left and right in order to scull the drink down as fast as you can. But you need to make sure that you don't drink too fast or the bill builds up in your throat and you end up puking and being disqualified. Again, this was quite an easy event to win. In the human hit event, the instruction manual for the game simply says throw stones at a barbarian, with the object being to hit the white dots three times each as fast as possible. You do this by moving your crosshairs over the dots, then hit the joystick button. But the trick is that your crosshairs bounce around like there's an earthquake, and it's really hard to get your crosshairs to move where you want them. I found this game quite hard and didn't get anywhere near the time of my opponent on this event, but found it quite fun especially thinking about that poor barbarian at the other end getting pounded in the face with rocks while I tried to hit the targets. The pole fight event pits you against your opponent on a log situated between two hills. The game manual simply says use a joystick to control the club. Very helpful. So I just started moving my joystick in all directions until it seemed that my opponent gave up and just let me beat the crap out of him until he fell off the log. Very short game but very sweet victory. This was the game I remember playing when I was a kid, the cat throw, and it's easy to see why. When I was a kid, the thought of grabbing a cat by its legs and spinning it around hammer throw style seemed like the funniest thing in the world. Not that I would actually do it in real life, of course. The game control itself is simple. You click the button to start your character spinning and click again when the cat is closest to the bottom of the screen in order to launch the cat as far as you can to the right. Of course the longer you spin the faster you spin and the harder it is to launch your cat in the right direction. I always sucked at this game as a kid and still suck at it as an adult but I still love it just as much as ever. The mountain walk event is next and your goal is to race to the middle of the rope walk before your opponent gets there. The game manual gives no instructions on how to accomplish this, but through trial and error it seems that you need to keep your character centred by counteracting their left and right wobbles by pushing your joystick in the opposite direction. I think you can also tap your button on your joystick to walk more quickly, otherwise your character just moves at a snail's pace on his own. I sucked at this game and the one time I actually didn't fall off my opponent made it to the middle and shook me off, so then I got pissed off and just committed suicide.
The next event is the axe throw event, in which you and your opponent take turns throwing axes at each other. When you throw the axe, you can aim for the upper body or lower body of your opponent, and conversely, when they throw their axe at you, you are able to duck or jump over the opponent's axe. The first competitor to get hit loses. Cop that, you bastard. The last event in the games is called Arm Wreck, or to us normal humans, Arm Wrestling. In this event, you waggle your joystick left and right as fast as you can in order to overpower your opponent. The faster you waggle, the stronger your character pushes. I was alright at this game at the beginning, but you have to waggle the joystick so fast that I ran out of steam. I used to be able to waggle my joystick really quickly as a kid, but I just can't do it like I used to. The manual stated that the barbarian that loses will be marked by a bird. I wonder what that means. Ah, oh, that's disgusting. That concludes the events and the ceremony at the end shows the winning competitor chopping off the head of the losing competitor. But in this case I had a draw so I guess both of our heads are safe. The graphics in this game are quite colourful and look great on the Commodore 64. The music is also very fitting for the game and sounds like sporting event music with a nice medieval feel. This game would be great to play with two players and is fun to play several times through in a sitting with load times being quite short between events. I really have fond memories playing this game as a kid and it was just as much fun to play through it again as an adult. I recommend that anyone who hasn't played this game before, try and track it down and give it a go. Thanks for watching my video and be sure to subscribe and check out some of the other recommended channels if you liked my video. Thanks for watching.